Let's move right on into the main program. So everybody knows what's coming up. It's field day. So first up, uh, Leon, who's who's uh, um, leading our radio operations, is going to take us through the event. Okay. So our field day operations. Uh, this is I'm, I'm going to talk strictly about the um, radio side of the operation. So uh, this year we decided to operate as a three alpha um, designation station. That means that well, there's going to be three stations that can operate simultaneously as portable stations. That means we're off the main power supply. We're generating our own power. And um, then we're going to have a go to station, get on the air station to go along with that. Um, I've listed the names of the uh, radio station managers here. Uh, Bob Myers, um, K2TV, is going to run the GOTA station. Uh, Doug Reese and Mike Imany are going to uh, co-lead the uh, digital station. And then Mike Magnotti and uh, yours truly, we're going to operate the other two stations. We have them set up to run either sideband or CW. Uh, and I'll show you how we're going to manage that in just a minute. So the guiding principles that we came up with at the very beginning of our talking about running the radio stations, first of all, we want to have fun. That's the most important thing. Uh, and we're also driving to simplify, simplify, simplify. A few years ago, we did a 5A setup, and it was... We actually only ran four, but we had 5A, and it was just, it, it was very ambitious and very difficult. And at that year, we decided we just got to roll it back and make it more simple. So we're at the 3A. But at the same time, we also want to be effective. So we don't want to have stations that where we're calling CQ and nobody can hear us. So that's where we've tried to find the balance. Of course, we want to be safe. And um, the other thing we're doing this year is we're transitioning to the use of 100% club equipment. In years past, members started bringing their radio gear to field day and it got to the point where we really didn't have any of our own gear that we were using and very dependent on members so the board made the decision to move us away from that last after last year and so we've acquired some new radios antennas that I'll talk about so um, we're well on our way to getting that sorted out so here's the field day site most of you will know it this is thanks to Google this is the nice satellite overview so the way we're going to set up is we're going to have the three stations uh, snuggled around those trees. Last year we were more spread out and we were in the hot sun and we decided to try to place the stations uh, in these trees so we can take advantage of some of the shade that's provided in the afternoon so it won't be so hot for us. The go to station is going to be up front and center because this is where people are going to be coming in. It'll be one of the first things that they'll see. So that the go to folks have decided to put the tent, um, their tent right, right in front of the operation. And then we're also going to have an administrative tent that'll be important for um, you to know about here in just a second. Uh, and then uh, one of the new innovations we have this year is where uh, over the last year the club has acquired three Buddy Hex antennas. These are hex beam antennas that are produced by the Buddy Pole folks and that they're, they're designed to be uh, very lightweight and very portable. So we can set these Buddy Hexes up in about a half an hour or so. I'll show you a picture of one in just a second. They're very lightweight. They're much safer than the um, uh, mass that we've set up with either the spider beam or the more standard uh, the uh, hex beams that we've used in the past. And and then our experience with them, we used them at Winter Field Day last year, for example, and we were running some magnificent pileups um, with those antennas. So uh, they're, they're directional and uh, they provide a lot of gain. And, and so we're really looking forward to using, we have four of them. So three of the club members bought them on behalf of the club. And then uh, a member is also contributing uh, his hex beam for our use. So we'll have a hex beam for every station that we're operating there. And then last year, uh, we piloted the use of uh, NFED half-wave antennas that are cut for 80 meters. So I'll back up and say that the buddy hexes operate on 20 meters and higher frequencies. So 20, uh, 15, 10, and 6 meters. So uh, they'll be available for, for, for that use. And then for the lower frequency bands, 80 meters, 75 meters, and um, also 40 meters um, operations. The NFEDs work very nicely for that. And and uh, last year, we used them in this configuration that you can see on the screen, and um, they work very well for us. So we're going to run up again this year. Uh, other things that you'll be interested in, there is a visitor center um, located, or visitor parking, sorry, visitor and uh, handicap parking that's going to be located here. Mike, I assume you're going to have that well labeled so people can see it. Uh, we all need to know where the... Uh, 
uh, portable potties are, so they're going to be located here, and uh, uh, the mess tent is going to be roughly here. And, th and this is mostly to scale, so things may move around a little bit during the day, but this is our, our basic concept for the, uh, the placement at the, um, at the site. So that's what we're going to set up and, and what you'll see in the way of operations. Now, in the way of radios, uh, in the last year, the club has acquired three uh, Yesu um, DX10s, FTDX10 radios. Um, if you follow uh, the, the Sherwood radio analysis, this radio sits right at the top in terms of radio quality. Again, we've used these um, in winter field day and in, in field days for the last couple of years, and, and they're really excellent radios, and they behave very nicely uh, in an environment where multiple radios are operating, so um, I think you'll enjoy using them. The nice thing about these radios is it it it'll also be the same across uh, the the two CW sideband stations. So uh, you'll be and also the GoTo station. The GoTo station will have one as well. So uh, they're really nice radios, and uh, you should enjoy. Like I said, you should enjoy using them. And then in the digital station, um, Doug and um, Mike are going to bring their flex radios. So the digital operations will be through the, 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 um, the uh, flex radio SDRs. I put a picture of a 6600, which I think is one of the radios that's going to be available in the tent. And again, you'll be able to see the magic of, of software-defined radio and how well it speaks to um, the computers to, uh, to do digital operations. So uh, it'll be nice, nice for us to see that as well. So we're top of the line advanced technology radio equipment that we're using. Uh, just so that if you haven't seen the Buddy Hexes before, this is what it looks like. Um, uh, they come with a little tripod and a, it's called a Mast Works Mast. Uh, the masts that we have are 10 meter masts. We run them up about 8 meters or so because they get a little bit wobbly if we extend them to the full length. But the uh, the antenna itself sits at the, at the top here. It looks like a, an umbrella that's been blown out in the wind and um, the various elements are on there for the different bands that uh, we'll be operating. The uh, NFED half-wave radios are composed of a transformer and then the wire that's cut for a half-wavelength on 80 meters. And uh, this is what we used last year. This is a little winder that keeps the, uh, where we keep the wire. And this is the transformer and the feed line fits on the end here. So that's it. They're really simple to use. We put two ends of the wires up in the trees and that's it. It's, uh, we're ready, ready to go. So um, it meets our requirement to keep it simple. Now, one of the things that we've been experimenting with, and this is a little maker group activity, uh, Mike McNaughty, KD4MM, uh, has designed a device to uh, create a wireless rotor that we're going to be able to use on the hex beam. So Mike uh, created this rotor using a little uh, Arduino-based microprocessor with a, a motor controller here, and then uh, these little wires lead down to the motor. And he's also written the software so that you can log on to this thing through our wireless network, and then uh, either from a computer screen or from your phone, you're able to rotate we we're able to rotate this antenna uh, from across the field uh, clockwise and counterclockwise. So uh, we're hoping this year that we'll be able to aim our antennas uh, remotely uh, while we're at the site. It's a great experiment, of, uh, a, a club maker activity that we've been involved with. And um, so we're excited that it'll work. The electronics gear uh, attaches to the mast here. And this is where the motor box is for the uh, motor on the uh, rotator for this antenna. So again, it'll be a cool little experiment if it works. Um, okay, so uh, for, for, for participation, we need help, of course, to set up the antennas. Uh, many of you will know that um, Don, um, KM, K, K, KD4, UDX, sorry, KM4 UDX has uh, put together a very nice spreadsheet that uh, you can find from the website. And uh, I've, I just made a copy of the page here that shows the sign up for setting up the antennas. Um, we initially put, uh, we forgot about Friday, and we listed uh, Saturday and Sunday as setup days, but the, the, we really want to focus on getting the antennas placed and ready to go on Friday afternoon. So we're going to start our main setup on Friday starting at noon, and we'll, we'll plan to work around 5 p.m.-ish or so. So uh, we have more folks signed up for Saturday right now than Friday, but if you have time to come out on Friday afternoon and help with the antennas, we're going to our, our objective will be to place the NFED half waves 
completely have them ready and set up to go so that Doug can be in a position to copy the uh, bulletin from the ARRL, which comes out on Friday. And we also want to have the hex beams set up so that on Saturday, all we need to do is raise them up, which uh, should be pretty straightforward. So uh, if we can get your help on Friday afternoon to set up, uh, do, do the first part of the setup, and then anybody who's interested can come out on Saturday. And then, of course, we all have to clean up afterwards. So all volunteers who are willing to help take down will be appreciated at the end of the program as well. Uh, Don has also put together a, uh, an operating table here um, where the way, the way we're, you'll see in a second, we, we have kind of a control mechanism to make sure that stations don't interfere with each other. Uh, so, and, and what we've tried to do is open the station so that if you're interested in operating CW, um, you can operate CW. If you're interested in sideband, you can do either at either of the two stations that are open. And uh, all you need to do is, uh, if you'd like to sign up in advance for a slot, um, otherwise, if a station is open and, and you want to operate um, during the event, just come in and, and do it. And, and we, this year, we really would like to encourage folks to operate. If you haven't operated before, um, those of us who are leading the stations, we're very anxious to help people get uh, get on the radio. If you've never operated in field day before, we'll, we'll show you how to do it and, and help you get started. And uh, some people, once they get on a roll, then we, we can't get the microphones away from, from you. So I'm hoping that we, we have the same kind of thing that happens. So please, 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 please come and operate in the stations because we'll be there to help. The other thing is, is if you want, um, if you have a CW key that you'd like to use, you can bring your own CW key. I know, Ron, you, you, you'll bring yours, but I would encourage folks to bring your own keys. We'll have keys in each of the stations. If you have headsets you want to use or microphones you want to use, uh, bring those, and we'll do our best to um, tie them up uh, to be used on the, um, on the two radios. Okay, so how do we man? How are we going to manage how this all works? We, we're going to have we used these last year. These are little um, band tags, what we've called them. They're little plastic tags that. So if you go into the admin tent, they'll be hanging on a little rack. So if you go walking in and you want to operate on sideband, and you see that a station is open, you can grab, for example, the 40 meter single sideband station and then take it to the station with you. So as long as you have that, you can run on 40 meter sideband. And then when the next person comes in and sees a tent's open, uh, they'll see the 40 sideband is missing so they can operate on 20 or 15 or, or whatever. So this is just be used as a guide to um, help manage um, and, and prevent people from interfering with each other while they're operating. The other thing, just want to remind everybody, we need to follow the FCC regulations when we're operating. So if you're a tech, you can come into these stations and operate on six meters. If you have somebody else along with you who's a general or extra, of course, um, depending on that person's pr privileges, they can serve as the control operator, and then you can operate on the other HF band. So that's just one thing we want to help make sure is that if you're, um, of course, if you're an extra, it doesn't matter. You can operate wherever it's legal. If you're a general uh, without an extra person to serve as control operator in the station, uh, we just ask you to follow the rules and, and stick into the stay, stay in the general end of the band. So um, just we'll follow the FCC rules and, and that's basically that's basically it. Um, and then when we're done, one of the other objectives we had, as I mentioned, is that we're going to have all of uh, the club gear together. We have these, these are lovingly known as our big yellow boxes. We have two of them, and we just got a, a big black box. So we'll have a BBB with the BYBs. And what we'd like to do at the end of the, the um, uh, event is to put each station's gear, all the speakers, all the microphones, all the radios, the power supplies, and everything in these yellow boxes. Uh, all neatly put away so that when we roll around to the next event, like the special event, we'll be able to go out to the locker, grab the yellow box, grab an antenna, and have everything ready to go um, for another portable operation or another contest or so forth. So uh, that's our grand plan and getting ourselves to being 100% um, club-owned gear in the operation. So that's it. That's the overview of what our plans are. And I'd be happy to answer any questions if anybody has any. Yes? Uh, I didn't see or hear anything about VHF, UHF, or satellites. So um, 
with regard to satellites, I know that you have an interest in satellites, and uh, maybe um, if you do, um, we, we can uh, work that. We also have been talking with Joe Porcelli about the possibility of him coming out. That hasn't been confirmed yet, but you know, Joe was out at our QRP to the field and had a magnificent setup out there. I don't know if he wants to try to do that again at, uh, at field day, but we only need to make one contact, so um, if you could help with that or, or whatever. And then um, there will be a VHF activity, but that's operating a little bit um, under the auspices of the GOTA team. Let people know they can sign up to be a logger. Yes, uh, let me defer to the tent captains on their thinking about loggers. Well, it's not that complicated. Um, in the stations, it works really nicely if, um, especially for uh, the sideband operations, we have one person operating the radio and managing the communication, and another person sitting right next to the operator uh, with the computer uh, logging the call signs that come in, just at you know, pilot and co-pilot, so to speak, so operator, logger, so somebody on the station, somebody on the logger, and um, helps with an extra set of ears and so forth. And, and it's a nice way, actually, if, if to start out, if, if you've never operated in an event like this before, uh, like these two back in the back corner back there, uh, you're welcome to come in, sit down, and then you know listen to what's going on, and then move up and sit down and log for a while. And once you get kind of the gist of it and the rhythm and that sort of thing, then you can move up and, and you can operate. So, uh, and, and as I said earlier, uh, we'll be there to help. If I can, I'm going to make one more plug for folks coming out to help set up antennas. If you're new and you've never set up antennas before, like wire antennas, um, we, we have a pretty pretty good way of doing that. We, we can show you how to shoot lines over trees and, and, and tie wires up in trees and then also setting up the antennas. So it'll be a learning experience uh, for, for you folks uh, if you've never set up antennas before to come out and help with that as well. So that's another reason for coming out and doing this. Okay? Okay. So thank you very much. Come to field day. Come operate. Come have a good time. Thank you. Absolutely. Come to field day and come operate. And I think, you know, Leon's point about operating, if you're a tech and you've never operated HF, come on out. You, we will find someone to sit with you, and you can operate um, pretty much anywhere on the bands over field day when, you, when you're with a control operator. And you'll have a first-class setup, and you'll be able to talk to the world, and you'll find out what the magic of HF communication is. It's a lot of, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. All right. And um, I'll just say then when you go home, you'll want to upgrade. You so. are going to definitely <laughs> want to upgrade. You're definitely going to want to upgrade. Yeah, so, 